year in the SEC has been so competitive this year. Every, everyone has lost this series except for you guys at this point. What has been the driving force between behind the consistency of your team this SEC season? Well, good players, number one, and good leadership. We have a lot of veterans. We have a lot of people who've been in leadership roles since the day they set foot on campus and have really evolved in, into leaders. And then we have uh, other people stepping up. So it's not just hearing from one voice, it's multiple voices. And I think, you know, from a playing perspective, it all starts in the circle. When you have two pitchers like Carlin and, and Peyton, um, <clears throat> you, you feel like you've got a chance to win every game. And, you know, if we've, you know, we, we've done it every different way. Like we've swept. We, you know, won the first one, lost the middle one, rebounded on Sunday. We won the first two, lost on Sunday. This past weekend, we lost on Friday and found a way to come back. So our team's been pretty resilient no matter what. Coach, you all didn't play too well in that first game against Mississippi State on the road, but then bounced back and had two great games. How do you get your team motivated to, you know, bounce back in games like that? And, you know, how yeah. proud are you to see them do it? Not too well is an understatement. We got our butt whipped. Um, <laughs> And I think that was a big wake up call for us, just in terms of um, our preparation. You know, we, we had done the same things from the standpoint of, you know, getting our cage work in, doing our stuff on the field, but I don't think we had the same um, intent behind what we were doing last week. And I was a little bit concerned about it and talked to them about it in the middle of the week, but, you know, sometimes they, they don't realize it until um, they get beat and they get beat bad. So, it, you know, if you're a competitor, that's going to make you wake up and come out a little different the next day. How do, you, how do you think the reaction to this was maybe similar to the reaction to getting run rule back in February in California? Oh, I think the reaction to this was, was different. Yeah, different. I think, you know, in California, it's early in the season. Um, we're still trying to figure things out. We're playing people in different positions. We haven't really settled into a lineup yet. Um, and this was different because this was really just us not – paying attention to details and making sure that uh, our mindset was right and our, you know, our mental and physical preparation was where it needed to be. What adjustments do you need to see Carly make in order to kind of get back to her dominant self where she struggled a little bit and start going there? Well, I think what's, you know, a little different for Carlin this year is um, last year she was kind of one of three. And this year with her starting on a lot of Friday nights, people are really gearing for Carlin. And I mean, Mississippi State, I think, is a good example of that. They, were, they really weren't prepared for Peyton. And, you know, but they put a lot of time and effort into preparing for Carlin. So it's understanding that, but then not using that as an excuse, which she never does. Uh, realizing you have different things to go to, and you have to adjust your game as you go based on what the other team is doing. Given the, the roles that Car Carlin and Peyton have, I mean, they've they're, they're got so many innings. You have to do special things to sort of safeguard their well-being, for lack of a better way of putting it? Um, I think we're kind of blessed that we have two. A lot of staffs have one who they're really going to be going to at critical moments, and then, you know, maybe two or three others that are picking up innings here and there. Uh, but, yeah, we did sit down and talk to them a couple weeks ago about, okay, this next eight weeks, you know, what are the all the things that each of you can be doing um, from a sleep standpoint, a nutrition standpoint, a hydration standpoint, you know, everything in order to make sure that you have the stamina that you want to have when we get into postseason play. Do they get that, you know, that they maybe have to make some adjustments along those lines because they are carrying such heavy workload? Absolutely. And, and I think they were both um, really excited about the prospect of, okay, let's just, you know, and it's not major things. It's not like you're going to gain 10 pounds of muscle in the next two weeks, and that's not what we need. It's just uh, not letting anything slip. You know, I mean, the simplest thing of drinking enough water. Right. I mean, hydration is an athlete's best friend. But, you know, just them understanding how important it is that they pay attention to every little thing. And uh, they were they were excited about, you know, the idea of kind of having a specific plan for each of them. What are your thoughts on the team limiting social media? Oh, uh, I, I'm really proud that, you know, they decided that on their own. I mean, as a coach, you try to introduce things to them and get them thinking about things. And that's something we do each year as we watch The Social Dilemma in January. And what's interesting to watch is that, you know, there's some people in that room who've seen it now three and four times. And each time it makes a, a deeper and deeper impact. And so for them to come up with that on their own, and then I, I gotta hand it to Charlie Orsini, because 
I gave her the job of, all right, if we're gonna do this, we have to have a way to track it and hold people accountable. And she hasn't missed a beat. She's sending out their little spreadsheet every week and, and everybody's responding. And, you know, I mean, I asked them one question. Do you draw energy from social media? And they were like, heck no. And I said, okay, then do we really wanna spend 25, 30 hours a week on it? <laughs> so I think it just made them look at things in a different way. Um, but I'm proud of them for taking the action and then holding themselves and each other to a different standard. Zana said it's helped make everyone closer because they're not automatically reaching for their phones and they're all talking all the time. Just how have you seen maybe the chemistry benefit from this or the impact of you know actually limiting it like this this year? Well, it, it's interesting you say that because it, it was at the time that we had the program come in and did two days of you know pretty intense, grueling leadership and team building. And they learned through that exercise that in times of adversity, they need to turn to their left and right and rely on their teammates to get through things together. So it was about the same time, you know, and I, I really asked two questions. Where do you draw energy? And they said, my teammates. Okay, just, do you draw energy from social media? No. Well, if we're not on social media as much, maybe we'll be spending more time with our teammates and developing deeper connections and deeper relationships because those are the people we need to go to um, when things get tough. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we've definitely seen that and, and they speak to it much more clearly than I can because they're the ones living it. And last year, you guys talked so much about how this is a player-led team. It definitely is the same feeling this year. Do you feel like this was an example of a way they maybe took that to another level, being a player-led team? Absolutely, because a lot of teams can say, oh, they want to do something and that sounds like a great idea, but it takes people within that locker room to actually put it into action and then hold themselves and each other accountable. And that's when really cool things happen, when they're willing to do that. Here are the challenges for this weekend's opponent. You know, LSU is a veteran team like us. In so many respects, we're, we're really similar. Um, they have a, a great sophomore pitcher in Cindy Brazon. She and Carlin came in the league at the same time. Um, they, they have a pretty versatile and deep pitching staff, uh, transferring Kelly Lynch who's doing some really good things for them. Um, they're, they're a dominantly left-handed lineup, which will be a different look. We haven't seen anybody that, you know, is gonna start seven, eight left-handed hitters in their lineup. So that's gonna be a little bit different, but I mean, we've got some lefties that, that we have in, in our locker room too that we can work against. Um, but they're very experienced and, you know, this time of year, everybody's just fighting. Fighting like heck for, you know, their spot in the conference standings, fighting for, you know, postseason seeding, and LSU is one of those teams that played a really good schedule out the gate, got off to a great start. So they put themselves in a good position for a top eight, uh, certainly a top 16 seed, but they're fighting for a top eight. So there'll be a lot on the line here. Karen, can, can you look at Carolyn and what she's doing this year and see some benefits from what she experienced last year as a freshman? She went through some things a little bit last year, didn't get hit and such. What, what's been the evolution maybe from those experiences to this season? Well, first of all, Carlin is one of the most honest, self-aware, and growth-minded athletes I've ever coached. And for somebody to be as talented as she is and still be willing to um, be open to different ideas, to try different things, um, not let her ego get in the way. I mean, it's, it's absolutely refreshing to coach her. Um, so, you know, with you take an athlete like that, um, they're going to improve, but she really bought into not just relying on her fastball. And, you know, we spent most of the fall throwing her changeup a ton, her rise ball a ton, so that she became more confident in those things. Um, as a coach, again, you can suggest something to an athlete, and a lot of times they're going to do it, but maybe they don't have the buy-in inside. She's got the buy-in uh, because she's so willing to um, – you know, focus on growth and not results. And even after this weekend, she and I talked yesterday and, you know, she had two or three things that um, she really learned from this weekend. And there's never any excuses with her. It's just all about what I learned and how can I apply that to my game to get better. I have time for one more. You guys are in position, you know, to eventually, you know, put yourself in position to contend for the regular season title. Mm -hmm. Just. Has it been something you have to talk about with the team since you did it last year, like not comparing or not putting that pressure to it, we have to win it again, or have they been pretty good about kind of not really getting into that already? You know, we talked back in the fall right away about not trying to, you know, be last year's team or compare ourselves. 
we have so many returners from last year's team, it's kind of hard not to do that. But I think this team has done a good job of letting their identity develop as the season goes along. You know, when you look at where we are now to last year, we're in roughly the same place, you know, going into these last three weeks. And to me, it's all about how do you take all that noise about, hey, you could do this and turn it into a benefit for you um, and, and attack that challenge, um, view the pressure as a privilege, and let's just go after it and whatever happens, happens. You guys brought home another series win. Just like, is there a feeling on this team that you are capable of doing what you guys did last year and even more? Yes, obviously last year we did, we performed really well, but that we flipped the page. It's a new season, new team, as Karen says, but the feeling's there, yeah, but it's a new season, so we're just gonna go attack every day. What's the gauntlet like of just like playing top team in the country, top team out of the country after like every single weekend in the SEC? It's great. It's SEC is so competitive. It's honestly preparing us for postseason. What's what stands out with this year's team? So you said it's New Year, new team. Um, obviously, a lot of additions. But what sticks out about this group in particular and the identity you guys are forming this year? Just our connection that we have with each other and our culture that we established within our team. But I'd for sure say the connection that we have with each other because it's strong off the field too. And once that connection off the field is super strong, then on the field, you know who they are, and you're just gonna go out there and just perform your best for your people to your, to your left and your right. What about this particular series of Village? What do you know about them? That they're a really good team. It's gonna be a good series. Um, we don't really look at the social media stuff about the ranks and stuff, but we know they're a really good team and they're top team. So it's gonna be a, a fun weekend. It's gonna be competitive and we're just gonna go out there and battle. Karen talked about Friday being sort of a wake up call. What did you take from that game, both into Saturday and Sunday and then also further into this weekend? It was for sure a wake up call. Um, we just, we came together and we talked and we just told each other that we need to be more competitive and just that wasn't Lady Ball softball and as you saw Saturday and Sunday's games, we came out there and we compete and we attacked every single pitch on defense and on offense. What makes this pitching staff so much different than everyone else's just because it's one of the best in the nation? Um, just their, their preparation, what they do during the week, what they do with our pitching coach, Megan. Um, every day they just come in and same way we have challenges on the offense, they're doing their challenges on the defense, so doing their preparation is just what is making them so good. Um, I heard that you guys like limit like social media time, and that was a player-led decision. Can you tell me more about that and how that came about and how it's helped? Um, yeah, we watched. I can't. I think it's called Social. It's something on Netflix that we watched together as a team in the fall. Um, but I think us coming together and deciding that we're gonna limit our social media hours was probably one of the best things that we've done this season. Just because of what happened last season and all the rankings and the polls that people put us at, it's just a distraction. And us limiting our hours was like, it was it was good for us. And it's, we're still doing it to this day. We do our check-ins every Sunday night. We submit our hours and nobody's been over hours. And it's just really good that people or they bought into what we what we decided to do. So once our teammates are buying in, it's just showing that being a player-led team is something that will help. Do you, um, do you find that the time that you guys maybe limit your stuff off of social media, are you spending more of that time interacting amongst yourselves then? Or? For sure. We're, we talk more to each other um, during team meals, in the, in the locker room. We're not on our phones. Mainly because of the hours, but now that we've not so used to, we've been doing it for a couple months now. It's just not even. Oh, let me grab my phone now. Or it's we're just so locked into each other when we're here. So when you're in in meetings and eating, you're you're not on the phones are put the away. The phones are usually put away. Yeah. So so, I mean, you probably know each other better than yeah. don't you? Or, or, we know like, that's what I said earlier about us having that connection off the field. That's where that social media hours stuff comes in is because we're so together, we're talking to each other all the time. Um, people, some, like we don't take our phones out to the field or like during games when we travel, our phones aren't in the dugout. We are barely on our phones while we're on the bus. We're having fun, listening to some music, getting pre-game ready stuff, and we're just always talking to each other.
Are you all surprised maybe a little bit by some of the benefits from this? I mean, you don't really know what it's going to do until you don't until you do it. So. At first, we were probably like, oh, this sucks. Because like, <laughs> we're always on our phones. Social media is, is what we usually go to. So yeah, I was surprised with how limiting our social media hours was what, sorry. I was surprised with what it was going to do for us. Mm -hmm. And it's just showing that it's something that we needed as a team. Who sparked the idea? He said it's a team thing, but who um, sparked it? I'm not really sure. I can't remember. It was somebody on our team, but we watched that show on the Netflix. And then it's just, we talked about it, and then we were like, okay, let's just do limit our hours. What was the show about? What, what, what did you guys take from the show that would inspire something like this? Um, what people see on their phones, they automatically assume that, oh, this is what I need to be doing. And I think there's like, there's one part in the, in the show where it was showing people behind, like, I don't know how it was, but it was like behind the scenes or something. And they like put stuff out because they know somebody's going to be attracted to it. And so that's what brings more people into the social media stuff and just more into what is being shown on social media. Team's pretty well known for their dugout chants. What chance can we expect this series? Who, I'm sorry, repeat it. Your team is well known for your dugout chants. Yeah. What what chance can we expect? Probably La Butara. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of cheers that we came up with. What's your favorite? Uh, ball train, chugga 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 chugga. And when we do that cheer, that means hitting's on roll. And we're in the back. One more. With the way you guys rebounded last weekend, you know, obviously starting off with that loss, just what do you feel like it says about this team in particular that it was you immediately turned around, wiped it from the slate, and just came out and dominated the next two games? It just shows that we, our whole motto this year is just let go. So us letting that game go. Obviously, it's going to sting for a little bit. It's like it's going to fuel us. But we let that go. We're all going to remember that game, but just letting go and coming back to dominate and attack our process and just attack, 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 attack. All right, thank you guys.